Hello everyone, welcome to part three of my series on transferring data from Access to Excel. In the last video we used Access to control Excel and we used the copy from record set method to move data from Access to Excel. In today's video we're going to, instead of using a method created just for moving data, we're going to write values to the spreadsheet cells. Now why might you want to do this instead of using one of the other methods we've already covered? Well perhaps you want to have some some blank data columns in the middle of your spreadsheet or maybe you want to mix in some formulas here and there. Uh, there's all kinds of reasons you might want to do that. Do this and instead of the other methods uh, again just trying to give you as many options as I can to move data from one place to the other. Let's get over to our <coughs> to our sample database. This is the same database we had in the last two videos. The same button. I'm going to go over to our uh, click event use the ellipsis to pull up the code window. Now it's the same code that we had in the, uh, in the in the part two of this series. I'm going to start with adding a new variable. We're going to use this to count rows on the spreadsheet so that we know what row we're on as we're moving through our record set. We use i as an integer. Um, I've simplified our query just a little bit. I've gotten rid of all the aliases, so we're just selecting part number, part name, price, sales price, and then our uh, formula for the discount. Everything else up here in the data set, data, uh, in the uh, record set area is the same. Um, everything up here as far as building Excel is the same as we had before. And I have added a new column. I'm giving us a, a blank column in between the uh, price and the discount. And it's just going to be a separator just to give us a little, little extra space before we get to the discount column. Uh, the formatting of the number columns is the same. I'm going to add a new format for column A, however. I saw that um, <clears throat> when I, we were writing the values in this method of, of moving data, that the, the uh, the data column was being right justified since all the part numbers are numbers. This ampersand will format the column A as text and that will left justify it for us. <coughs> now here's what we had last time for building our column headings and copying our data. We're going to get rid of that this time. We're going to be doing something else. I'm going to copy in. We're going to write our column names ourselves this time. <clears throat> so we have build column headings right here and I decided instead of starting in um, in the first row of the spreadsheet, this, we're going to start in the fourth row of the spreadsheet this time. So again I've got range A4, that's our first uh, first column in the spreadsheet, fourth row. Set the value of that equal to the string part number and then the rest of these as well. Uh, notice I've got I go from column D to column F. We're skipping column E because we have a column E here. Remember, this is going to be a short little, little, a little narrow column, giving us some space between sales price and discount, just to help it look a little bit better. Now, I'm going to move, I'm going to create a loop here. We have populated, we have populated a record set up above, and now we want to loop through this record set and get at each row of data. So I'm going to build a do while loop. Say do while not record set end of file. So in other words, we're going to perform what we put inside of this loop until oops, until we get to the end of record set. And inside here, what we want to do is we're going to copy each value from a record set into a cell. <coughs> and before I do that, we're going to, I need to give you power setting value i. All right, so remember the i energy that I created up above? This is gonna be how we tell how we tell Excel which row to write our cell values on. Okay, i represents which row. So, I'm, so we put our column headings on row four. So I'm going to start writing data on row five. So i equals five. We're setting the initial value to five. And then here we have for column A, we're going to put part number in column A. So range A, we concatenate a hard-coded A 
is whatever value we have in I. So we go through this loop, value, and RS1 using the uh, exclamation mark um, syntax, part number. Part number is the, the, the column name that's coming from our, from our, our query. I'm using the NZ function. Uh, it's a good idea to always use this when you're pulling data from access or from a query or from a record set and putting it into Excel. You never know when you might run into null values. And what NZ does for us is <clears throat> if part number is null, it will put whatever we put over here in its place. So part number and part name are strings, so we're going to substitute a, a zero length string for those. Uh, price, sales, price, and discount are numbers. So if those are null, we're going to substitute in a zero for those. Okay, so again, we're, for the, our range, we're concatenating column A with whatever our value of I is. So underneath that, before we get to the end of our loop, every time we go through this loop, if we want to move to the next row in the record set, so that is rs1.move next. Okay, so the first time through, we read our first record from the record set, we move all this from the record onto the spreadsheet, then we increment i by 1, okay, it'll equal 6, and we move to the next record, and we'll go back up and get the second row. Increment i, move to the next increment, and get the third row. All right, and that's what we're doing. The last thing I want to do is I want to correct a mistake I had in my last video. I forgot a little bit of cleanup code, and it was very important cleanup code. Whenever you're dealing with um, record sets, you want to make sure that part of your cleanup code includes closing your record set and then setting the reference to that record set equal to nothing. Okay, uh, This releases whatever resources you had tied up with pulling a reference to your, to your object. You want to get rid of all your objects if you can, whenever you can, to, to avoid uh, your, your, your program becoming a memory hog and you know, using up your uh, customer's computer resources. So that is it for our code. Okay, we just got a new way of doing, different way of doing column headings, and we'll loop the record set until we uh, get to the end. When we get to the end of the record set, we pop out of the loop, and uh, then we're done. So I'm going to save this. Let's go over to our form form view and run it. And there we go. So we've got our four, our three blank rows, our column headings started on row five, and then everything else, row five and down. Again, we've got the same formatting we had before, dollar signs, percent signs, um, the, uh, the text justification there, the text format, left justifies our part number. And that is it for this video. In the next video, I'm going to build on this example, and we're going to do some formatting. We might add some headings up here, do some bolding and whatnot, maybe some lines and totals down below, maybe some colors even. And we'll just see how far we can go with, uh, with formatting. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.